How the human mind is actually uploadable and downloadable, much like a computer, um, mm. using these various frequencies and electromagnetic weapons. Of the totality of the information that you could discuss tonight, what percentage of it do you think is not in the public domain? If you were totally free to discuss any darn thing you wanted to be, what percentage of it is secret? Of what I've seen, 99%. 99% is secret? Of, of what I've seen, but I don't see everything. I only see bits and pieces of it. <sighs> and by the time I get it, it's... Uh, Sometimes it's ten years later before I realize the significance of what, is, what has been done or what project I've worked on. Enjoy the journey. that uh, basically deals with the problem that we're seeing actually national, nationally and globally of uh, people being harassed um, with a very advanced technological form of surveillance uh, that not only can um, download uh, thoughts and experiences and hallucinations and voices into your head to harass you with, but can control the electronics in your house how the human mind is actually uploadable and downloadable, much like a computer, um, mm. using these various frequencies and electromagnetic weapons. And mm. as you know, there was an article written called The Mind Has No Firewall, and that certainly uh, mm. has proven to be true, that uh, you can actually program the mind much like you program a computer. Eventually, the government's going to have to address that this is a, you know, a, a, a problem of victimization mm -hmm. and a criminal problem rather than a psychiatric one, because up to this point, most of the people voicing these complaints have been shipped off to psychiatrists to further victimize them. So most of this is being done without a chip, uh, contrary to popular belief. Most people think you have to be chipped to be tracked. And with this technology, it's actually tracking you based on a brain fingerprint or uh, individualities uh, in your individual brain wave. Hi, everybody. This is Lisa Haven, and today I've got some rather intriguing information that I came upon. But it is proof the elite are using brain waves. Did you hear that? Brain waves to control and monitor your thoughts. And um, I stumbled across this patent, and I'm going to share it to you in just a moment, but it goes over some in-depth information about brain waves and just crazy, out-of-this-world technology of the future that the elite very well can use to monitor and control not only our thoughts, but our emotions and how we feel. The chipping is the rarity. Most of the people, we can't find any evidence of chipping, yet they're still being victimized, uh, not mm -hmm. only with hearing voices in their head, hearing voices of their perpetrators in their surroundings, but being attacked with directed energy, uh, which can cause headaches, you know, uh, heart palpitations, muscle spasms, muscle twitching, uh, heartburn, I mean, just a variety of symptoms. Now, some of that can also be done with EEG entrainment, um, as we talked about, that you can actually bombard the brain with a foreign frequency um, that corresponds to the EEG tracing of someone with, let's say, flu-like symptoms. Mm -hmm. Well, if your brain is bombarded with that um, external frequency, it will slowly entrain that frequency, and then you will display the symptoms of the desired trait that they're trying to make you display. 
question about some of the technology that you're developing to fight the war on terror, specifically directed energy and high-powered microwave technology. Do you, uh, when do you envision that you can weaponize that type of technology? Mm -hmm. Goodness. Um, it, is, it is in, for the most part, the kinds of things you're talking about are in varying early stages. Do you want to give anything you'd add? I don't think I would add much. I, yeah. I, if, I think they are in early stages and, and, and probably not ready uh, for employment at this point. But you sound like you're willing to experiment with it. I, I think that's the point. And I think, and it's, we, we have, I think, from the beginning of this conflict, I think General Franks has been very open to looking at uh, new things if there are new things available and has been, been willing to, to put them into the fight. Well, let me go down the list of some of these that I came up with. We've, we've got DARPA has a sonic projector that was reported on in 2007, but of course it had been around for quite some time before then. Army has something they call voice to skull. We've got the Air Force using microwaves to create sounds at Brooks Air Force Base. We've got the Marine Corps with their Medusa project. We've got the State Department, as reported by the Washington Post in 2005, working on voices implanted in people's heads. We've got a couple of companies, one that has patented something called Hypersound, that's American Technologies, has also got Holosonic Research Labs, also has a patented version. So the military industrial complex has been all over this. When you see something this wide, this is not just one little research project from one organization. And this is something that five, 10, Years ago, it was being reported on in even mainstream press, like the Washington Post, and yet nobody knows about this. Well, the people who follow the internet pretty closely, and certainly the victims of this technology mm -hmm. know about it, but you're right, there's been a lot of research done into how to put voices into one's head. Uh, it was found long ago that if you can put a voice into someone's head, you, you can do several things. If I put a voice that's foreign to your normal thought pattern in your head, that becomes harassment and the harassment over time will make you display signs of schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. When you go and tell people that you're hearing voices, we've been uh, patterned to turnkey see that as schizophrenia mm -hmm. and not even look to see if there's a legitimate source for it. Mm -hmm. uh, if I put a voice in your head that's in your voice, and if you pattern a thought, uh, like I tell some of these victims, when you read a book, you're actually hearing your own voice in your head as you read. If I put that voice in your head, then that becomes a thought Wow. And you'll act on those thoughts, and that's how they think that some of this is being used for subliminal control. Wow. I know that in some of these articles I was reading on the mid-2000s, they were talking about how they were using it as a voice of God, as the voice of Allah, because they figured that it was something that they could use. They thought that uh, the people that they were going against uh, that were Muslims were very religious, superstitious. And well, and that was mind. used in the field of battle. The mm -hmm. voice of God weapon, which is actually called Esquad, or silent sound spread spectrum was used in the first Operation Desert Storm. Um, that was one of those scenarios where 1,500 Iraqi soldiers disassembled their weapons, got to their knees, and surrendered to 150 Marines who didn't have enough slip ties to tie them all together because, and this was admitted, that they used Esquad to put the voice of Allah in their heads to tell them to surrender. Wow. Um, before that, in the, in the mid to late 80s, Five separate um, inmates from the Utah State Prison had written affidavits saying that they were put in solitary confinement and were experimented on with some type of electronic device that put voices in their head and all of them claimed that they could tell the voices of the people doing the experimentation on them were responding back to their thoughts. Wow. So this has been going on for a while. Unfortunately, it's just not gotten any major media coverage until recently. So they're basically setting themselves up as the ventriloquists and we're the dummies or the zombies, right? Well, it's, you know, it's like I've said in other, uh, with other reporters and other shows that guns and taxes won't control everybody. Yeah. Uh, electromagnetic technology will. Wow, wow. The unfortunate thing with this type of voice to skull or microwave auditory effect type hearing is that it's designed for only the target to hear. Um, in 1996, the Army came out with their uh, addendum to the biologic effects of non-lethal weapons where they talk about the microwave auditory effect and how even with um, microphones in the ear canal or microphones attached to the scalp that uh, the voices can't be recorded and they go on to say imagine the incapacitating effect on an enemy combatant when they begin to hear voices in their own head. Uh, mm -hmm. Another high-ranking military official said we now have the ability to to talk someone to death. Um, so the, the bad thing is once these victims 
tell their family members, tell their employer, uh, tell their physician that they're hearing voices. Well, I mean, in today's psychiatric community, if you're hearing voices your psychiatrist can't hear, then you're delusional or schizophrenic until proven otherwise. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, the, the psychiatric community has not been educated on the fact that there there is technology out here now that is meant to mimic mental illness. Now, what do you mean by mind control? There's an awful lot of technologies involved in that. Yes, of course, in the old days, uh, it involved uh, drugs, chemistry, uh, torture, that kind of thing. And that actually continued on until the 1960s and 70s. Once we get into the late 80s, early 90s, mind control was developed uh, through satellite transmission so that you didn't have to be taken to a, a specific location to be programmed. You could be programmed eating lunch or sleeping or going about your daily business. Yeah, similar to the film They Live. Similar to that, yes. So, uh, so can you describe the techniques involved in, in these types of mind Yes, and uh, it was actually pre-Montauk uh, project. Montauk was actually 1970 to 1983. But uh, we have to thank uh, the Germans during World War II uh, for developing procedures that fractured the mind pattern of a human being through torture. They developed what is called psychic driving, where you bring a person to extremes, several hours or days of extreme cold and then extreme heat you can give them uh, starvation for several days and you overfeed them, make them sleep for days and then keep them awake. Fracture, the mind doesn't know what to expect. And then this was developed further by Dr. Ewan Cameron, who uh, after the war brought the Nazi techniques to Canada, actually, uh, in the now, late 1940s. He's a Scot- uh, Dr. Ewan Cameron was a Scottish scientist who was very interested in this kind of work. And after the war, as uh, people know now, uh, in the U.S. it was Project Paperclip, where they would bring uh, valuable Nazi uh, scientists, doctors, etc., to the United States, Canada, U.K., even to the Soviet Union, where they would continue their experiments and they were saved from the Nuremberg trials, etc. And Dr. Ewan Cameron got the uh, German information and he started clinics in Montreal, in Ottawa, in Toronto, and he en- enveloped or, or, or enhanced the psychic driving. He started out in mental institutions where he would have the subjects uh, uh, in a room where they would have a split uh, board between their eyes. One side would see uh, a flower blooming, another side would see an animal being ripped apart. And one ear would be classical music and another ear would be loud, horrendous music. Was it important which side saw what? See. They would switch sides so that the left brain, which is the ego, uh, physical reality based side, and the right brain, the creative, emotional, spiritual side, would then be confused as to what to accept, and the mind would then fracture. And that's when programming was uh, initiated in the mind pattern. They knew through the German experimentation that uh, the most you could fracture a mind would create a uh, a geometric shape in the mind of a cube of 13 by 13 by 13 and that would lead to 2,197 compartments uh, that could be programmed into subpersonalities, full personalities, specific functions, constructs, etc. I think of Guantanamo Bay and the question of interrogating terrorists. We can now, in the future, be able to think about reading a terrorist mind without using coercive tactics. Certain brain patterns correspond to certain thoughts, a dictionary of thinking. Now, in the, from the psychiatric community standpoint, at the very top of the psychiatric community, I mean, they know very well that this technology exists because the early mm-hmm. studies on mind control through MK Ultra and MK Search and Bluebird were all headed up by psychiatrists. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Many of these psychiatrists were tops in their fields. Um, you um, and Cameron up at McGill University was the president of the American Psychiatric Association and the Canadian Psychiatric Association. Uh, Jolly West uh, out in California, uh, same thing, one of the top people in his field. Now, mm-hmm. does this, this all knowledge trickle down to the community psychiatrist that you're going to be sent to in your hometown? Probably not. Um, a matter of fact, some of the psychiatrists that I know that I've talked to don't even fully believe that MK Ultra really happened. They've, they've done, it's not taught in their schools. 
you know, certainly they're not going to teach teach them in residency that their profession was responsible for some of the most horrendous crimes ever known in this country. Yeah. Um, so, so they're largely ignorant of the technology, and um, that's where it, it's really, you know, kind of our charge to educate the the community psychiatrist anyway that that just because someone's hearing voices doesn't mean they're schizophrenic. They may actually be a, a victim of criminalization. So. Um, that's where we need to do a better job, probably educating them. Unfortunately, when you're another physician trying to tell a psychiatrist, a uh, fellow physician psychiatrist, that voices in somebody's head is technologic, you know, and not mental illness, then you're subject to getting a diagnosis as well. So, Civilian and military units shall be trained in containment and combat of classified, including irradiated classified with possibility of classified airborne, classified flesh eating, classified and or all of the above in such event as classified spewing, classified escape. Um, here's the publication number, the type, the application number. It was published as you see in 2000 and it was filed in 1998. And so it's been a couple of years that it's been out because now we're in 2014. However, I can only imagine that the advancements that this has made since then, just, just something to think about. It lists the inventor and all this information in case you want to look at that. But let's just get into the nitty gritty of this thing. Okay, here's what the patent's title is. Communication system and method including brain wave analysis and or use of brain activity. Now here's the abstract, the overall of what it is about. A system and method for enabling human beings to communicate by way of their monitored brain activity. The brain activity of an individual is monitored and transmitted to a remote location. At the remote location, the monitored brain activity is compared with pre-recorded normalized brain activity, curves, waveforms, or patterns to determine if a match or substantial match is found. If such a match is found, then the computer at the remote location determines that the individual was attempting to communicate the word, phrase, or thought corresponding to the match stored normalized signal. So basically what that is saying is this is a system by which brain activity of a human being is transported to a remote, a remote location. Now, obviously there are good intentions and good reasons to have this, but as with most, as with most, as with most things, excuse me, it can highly be abused, it can be misused, and it can be commercialized, especially by the elite. Who wouldn't want to get their hands on something like this, especially someone with a lot of money and a lot of power? You know, for years, everyone has thought that the brain's too complex. Uh, there's no way you'll ever control people. You can't you do mind control. The brain's too complex to be controlled. And the fact is that it's just simply not. Uh, especially when they started working with uh, various frequencies, uh, elf waves and microwaves, it turns out that the brain is actually very easy to manipulate. Um, and like you said, it goes back as far as the 60s and 70s. You see um, Malik's uh, invention from 74 hit the brain with two dissimilar frequencies. It spits out an interference frequency. You can actually decode the EEG from that interference frequency. And it was initially invented as a way to uh, watch pilots so you would know when they fall asleep or when they start. They just announced Toyota, you're going to turn your car on with a brainwave. Exactly. Uh, and we've even got toys out now. Uh, two, was it two years ago, uh, Mattel came out with a toy where you control a little ball rolling around on a, on a, a bed of fans with your mind. And that's an elf wave based toy. It's elf waves generated from your mind that you're controlling a ball remotely with. So, I mean, it, the technology is really not that far-fetched, and especially now when, uh, with Snowden's release and you see the NSA, you know, what all of us already knew, especially you and I, that, yeah, our cell phones and our text messages and our emails are being, are being watched. And the IRS is targeting libertarians and conservatives and harassing them and arresting them. They are authoritarians. Yeah, so, I mean, when you look at that, it's not too far of a stretch to go, well, if you're going to watch everybody, then you have to exert some form of control. And, you know, if you look back at the research on it in the early studies, it started with MKUltra and targeting individuals. Um, then it seems like they went into group research type study. You see uh, the Heavens, the People's Temple with Jim Jones. You see Heaven's Gate. Um, 
a lot of people allege that... Oh, the, Jim Jones was CIA. That came out. Exactly. And that the CIA actually creates these cult groups so they have a captive population. Well, that's their front. Yeah, to test, test this kind of type of technology and mind control on a group. Well, now the group is society. They know they can work it in a small group. They know they can control an individual. Now they need to control society and the world at large. You know, the psychi psychiatric community has been trying to mainstream, you know, mental illness for a long time. You know, mm -hmm. you've seen the commercials for all the various antidepressants where, yes. you know, they're, they're trying to say, you know, hey, it's okay to have a mental problem. You can be on antidepressants or Seroquel and it's okay. You know, you're still going to function and society's still going to love you. Unfortunately, that's not the truth. Um, once you're diagnosed as delusional or psychotic or schizophrenic, you know, for voicing these complaints, um, really your life starts to spiral downhill after that because your employer usually doesn't want to keep you hired on uh, if you seem to be mentally dysfunctional or, or have been diagnosed as mentally dysfunctional. Uh, your family members will treat you differently, pretty much ostracized uh, after that. And then that just adds to the problem that, that in your heart of hearts you know you're a victim but no one else believes you, and then that tends to lead to behavior that even makes you look even more crazy um, as you try to convince everybody around you that it really is happening. So it's, it's kind of a vicious cycle, uh, and once you reach that point, um, it's pretty hard to get back. President Lyndon B. Johnson had on his board of science advisors geophysicist J.F. McDonald, who wrote, quote, one could develop a system that would seriously impair the brain performance of very large populations in selected regions over an extended period. The CIA's program in experimental mind control became known as MK Ultra. MK Ultra was uh, a government program to see whether, uh, through various different techniques, people could be made to do things which they wouldn't normally do. During the 1960s and 1970s, Dr. Andrea Pucharic studied the impact ELF waves have on the brain. What he discovered was shocking. Dr. Pucharic found that a 6.6 .6 hertz ELF wave could cause depression. A 7.83 hertz ELF wave made a person feel good, producing an altered state. And a 10.80 hertz ELF wave could trigger riotous behavior. One of the reasons we think it's probably multimodal, it's, it's probably coming from a combination of ground sources, satellite, and HARP. Um, you know, we've taken victims uh, out onto desolate ranches here in Texas where we know there's no cell coverage, there's no power lines, there's really, there's mm -hmm. very little electromagnetic pollution, and they still hear voices and they still get attacked. You know, we've had people go from this country to another country and get attacked while they're on the plane. Uh, mm -hmm. Taking people on, on boats into the middle of the Gulf of Mexico, they still get attacked. Um, that part of it um, leads me to believe that a lot of it is satellite-based because it can track yeah. anywhere. And many victims will tell you, well, I left California to the Midwest thinking I would get away from it. And they get away from the stalking for a little while until <laughs> you know they're handed over to another perpetrator group, but they don't get away from the attacks. Um, just worldwide experimentation. This, the, the technology is meant to control you. Um, with the random sample of people that it seems to be, be targeting and the fact that it's happening globally, and all of these people have vir virtually identical complaints. You feel sleepy and relaxed. So relaxed. You trust me and what I say. The government love you. The government cares for you. Watch the television. This is the truth. Criminals and terrorists want to kill you. The government will save you. The police will save you. We need to go to war to protect you. We are here to look after you. Conspiracy theorists are insane and dangerous. Be fearful. We are small and weak. The government is strong. We will look after you. Obey. You must obey. Do not challenge authority. You are bad. Humans are bad. You must work hard. To survive, you must have more money. You must be better than him and her. You are separate and alone. Other people want to hurt you and take what is yours. You must always respect authority. Cheryl Welsh maintains that the U.S. government is testing mind control on unknowing victims. 
Well, basically, um, this is an, I, I'm networking on the internet, and this is a worldwide international problem. Uh, the International Red Cross has a 1990 article which discusses the uh, fact that, that many major superpowers, many industrialized countries, are researching electromagnetic technology for anti-personnel um, uses, and um, the technology is highly classified. Cheryl believes that she and others are the victims of this mind control research. Many of the victims that I network with describe hearing voices and um, microwave illness where, where they have uh, headaches, uh, just generally sleep disturbances, uh, sunburns even though it's at night, just microwave effects. Microwaves and other radio frequencies are known to affect the human body. But could they be responsible for voices in people's heads? In Chicago, Illinois, a world authority on microwave hearing shows how it could work. I'm hearing a microwave pulse like a click. Now it sounds like a, a chirp with a tonal quality to it. Professor James Lin is hearing sounds that aren't there. But he's not crazy. Pulses of microwave energy are being generated and fired at him from behind. Microwaves can be heard depending on the individual, uh, depending on the hearing acu acuity of the individual. Individuals with a fairly normal hearing can hear microwaves at a quite a low level. Voices. That's how they get you. The Spooks have developed a technology called synthetic telepathy. They beam a frequency at you and let your skeleton conduct the voices like an antenna. It sounds like ghosts inside of you. They've targeted individuals for experimentation. The energy of the absorbed microwaves causes brain tissue to very slightly heat up and expand causing a pressure wave to be picked up by the hearing mechanism in the inner ear. Professor Lin is far from hearing voices, but it could be possible to send coded signals to an agent this way. Brain is an electrical organ. Uh, it is uh, susceptible to electrical signals. Since microwave is electrical, therefore, in principle, one could uh, embed or encode information in the microwave signal says that it could be perceived by the brain. That there would be a national security force and every town would have blimps, even small ones over it, that were solar powered during the day, and that then you would have microwaves uh, to spy on people for their safety, of course, and all the rest of this, and how ground penetrating radar to look through your walls, and now they're launching all this. And, and it's all designed for control. Well, I'm just saying they can put a lot more cheaply on these. Yeah. Yeah, well, and, you know, the satellite, you know, we're launching reconnaissance satellites and surveillance satellites, you know, every couple of weeks. There's a ton of them up there, and I know when I talk to the victims, they say, well, is it one or two or two or three? It's thousands of reconnaissance satellites that are up there. And the other question that a lot of victims will get is, well, how is somebody spending this kind of money to follow you, to watch you all the time? And actually, most investigators will tell you satellite surveillance is the cheapest way you know, to track somebody. The satellites are already up there. Our tax dollars launched them. Um, all you sure, sure, but I'm just saying launching more of them, they're going towards blimps. Yeah. You can put them at 100,000 feet, people hardly see yeah. them, yeah. and they can just have huge arrays on the bottom. Yeah, and, and, they're, and like you said, they're solar powered. You know, they stay, they're powered forever. It's, it's amazing. amazing. There. Is that it's an extremely low frequency, mm -hmm. and it keeps the uh, inner ears uh, the bones vibrating at a very high rate, and you get that humming or, or buzzing sound in there. That's right, and if it's in uh, the left ear, it's physical, right? It's coming from a physical Correct. source? Yes. And if it's in the right ear, it's coming from a non-physical source? Correct, that's right. Would, would that be from the astral level? Yeah, because the government does use technology in the lower astral levels uh, that can affect the physical. And they, of course, it's much easier to deal with things from that level because it's undetectable and uh, very easily can be manipulated. Yeah. We're dealing with a form of technology where you can no longer trust your senses. You can't trust what your eyes see. You can't trust what your ears hear. 
And more than that, you can't trust what you really believe to be true or false. HARP is a bank of 180 antennas, each as tall as a seven-story building, erected near Gakona, Alaska. The antennas emit extremely low-frequency waves, also known as ELF waves, into the upper atmosphere. You'd have a signal that would hit the ionosphere, begin to pulse the energy into the ionosphere, and the ionosphere, this layer, would begin to pulse back. So it changes it from a direct current to an alternating current, sending back to the Earth in the ELF range, extremely low frequency range of 1 to 20 hertz. Those same frequencies, 1 to 20 hertz, happen to correlate with predominant brain frequencies in human beings. I don't know if you've ever heard of the False Memory Foundation. There's actually a foundation that's made up of mostly researchers and psychiatrists. It's called the False Memory Foundation. And they specifically uh, disagree with the fact that, that any technology that people are complaining about that gives them false memories of experimentation, they're saying that that's all memories being intentionally implanted by psychotherapists and not from experimentation. Mm -hmm. So, and oh. Michael Persinger, who's done a lot of this research with microwave energy, is a member of the False Memory Foundation. If you go back uh, to the work of Gordon Gay of McDonald in the 1970s, you'll find that he was talking about being able to modulate uh, a signal into the ionosphere that would be able to return a signal that the human body would couple with, would lock onto and begin to follow in a manner that would change the emotional state of people over a large geographic uh, area. Does HARP fulfill McDonald's prophecy? as the day of mass mind control arrived. Fearful. You do not like music. You do not like people who smoke. You do not like people who try to tell you things that are bad about your government. These people are dangerous. They are not to be trusted. Take your vaccine or swine flu will kill you. We care. You must buy our products. Pay your taxes and watch the television. Do not question authority. Keep fighting each other. Do not question. Violence in films is sexy and exciting. Sex with strangers behind your partner's back is exciting. Your partner is boring. Your partner is cheating on you. Does not love you. You are worthless and not worthy of being loved at all. The Russian Mind Control Program Controlled Offensive Behavior USSR is a 1972 US Army study of Soviet mind control experimentation. The Russian Directed Energy Weapons Program focused on targeting of individuals not groups. Soviet dissidents were the target of microwave anti-personnel weapons and mind altering techniques that sought quote the total submission of one's will to some outside force. Electromagnetic weapon mind control surfaced in the 1973 Russian Conference on Psychotronic Research. The agenda for the Prague meeting included the following five topics. Erasure of the subconscious mind, development of ESP, induction of paranormal effects in dreams, the mechanical equivalent of neuropsychic energy, and the Psy gene. The Soviets were known to have potent blinding lasers. They were also feared to have developed acoustic and radio wave weapons. A 1987 issue of Soviet Military Power, a Cold War Pentagon publication, warned that the Soviets might be close to, quote, a prototype short-range tactical radio frequency weapon. The Washington Post reported that year that the Soviets had used such weapons to kill goats at one kilometer's range. Under so-called no normal circumstances, uh, the human mind is under operation of a core personality. And the core personality will function uh, in an intact uh, manner uh, during uh, daily life, etc. However, when uh, trauma and extremes are introduced uh, simultaneously, the mind cannot handle the overload of input and so it starts to dissociate. In fact, very often uh, the personality will actually leave the body uh, to a degree so that it doesn't have to experience the pain and trauma that is being inflicted upon it. 
And so the mind then starts to compartmentalize so that a portion of the mind will handle what's being done while another portion of the mind is distracting the consciousness or the personality from the trauma. And if this is done repetitively, then both the uh, distraction and the uh, awareness start to fracture because they can't handle the overload. It is another objective of this invention to provide a system capable of identifying particular nodes in an individual's brain, the fringes of which affect characteristics such as appetite, hunger, thirst, communication skills. Nodes in general are utilized to communicate certain words such as yes and no or even phrases, I don't know, I'm not sure, or numbers 1, 2, 10, 100, and the like. Thought processes, depend, uh, depression, and the like. When such nodes are identified, they may be specifically monitored by one or more sensors to analyze behavior or communication or words, phrases, or thoughts. In other embodiments, devices mounted to the person, and get this, underneath the scalp, may be energized in a predetermined manner or sequence to remotely cause particular identified brain nodes to be fired in order to cause, get that, cause a predetermined feeling or reaction in the individual, such as a lack of hunger, lack of depression, lack of thirst, lack of aggression, lack of Alzheimer's disease effects, or the like. I don't know about you, but to me, this sounds like an utter nightmare. I mean, literally a nightmare. I mean, they have the ability to control and know what you're thinking. And for, for the elite out there to have that information, this isn't a, I mean, check this out, analyzing behavior and it's linked with depression and get this in order, it, this is, these little sensors, these little brain notes are fired in order to what? cause a predetermined feeling or reaction cause cause which makes you feel a certain way makes you react a certain way and what do they list as examples makes you have a lack of hunger lack of depression lack of thirst lack of aggression lack of alzheimer's you know there's a little bit of good and with a lot of bad and this is just a freaky thing. And I always use the analogy that uh, thoughts are film, the brain is the projector, and physical reality is the screen. And so if you don't like the movie that's playing, you change the film, which is the way you think. However, uh, the film can be replaced uh, artificially uh, through this programming process. And that's what the Illuminati powers that be do in order to download certain softwares into the mind so that certain functions uh, via triggers are accessible. Could you explain those terms? Well, there is a difference between programming and mind control, and I know a lot of people use them synonymously. Programming is the actual software that's installed with the foundations of all the functions and alters. Mind control is the operation of that programming. And that is also different than brainwashing. Brainwashing happens every day. Your parents can brainwash you, school, uh, politics, religion especially, and that's just telling you something over and over again until you believe it. But the programming and mind control is an embedded pattern that actually hooks onto your foundational mind patterns and is an overlay. And so you think that it's your own thought when actually it's been artificially introduced. According to this article in the Washington Post magazine, in 1994, the Air Force Research Laboratory carried out experiments where scientists used technology to transmit phrases into the heads of human subjects. How? By burying subliminal messages in microwaves and beaming them into a person's head. The Air Force denies it's working on one. But patent number 6470214, issued on October 22, 2002, says otherwise. The patent title, Method and Device for Implementing the Radio Frequency Hearing Effect. The agenda behind those? The agenda behind all of this 
is to create a society that is robotical, uh, very similar to what you see on the Borg in Star Trek. You know, you report to a computer system, you don't question anything, you don't deviate from your functions, you do what you're told, and uh, there is no uh, independent thinking to do otherwise. The part that is important is that to the Illuminati, uh, this is a form of their society, this is their culture, and they do this to ensure that the culture does not deviate from its agenda uh, through eons of time. That it's time now that people in America and all over the world become more aware of the, the many thousands, if not larger numbers of victims of people that have been used in mind control experimentation, um, as well as being used um, within our own government and other governments as operatives that have been under mind control, used as a, a slave labor force without uh, their own knowledge or awareness. One scary possibility that we would have to guard against is that, uh, is it possible that hackers of the future could somehow manage to peek inside our own heads? There may be reason to be concerned. No, electronic harassment as a whole with this surveillance, this electronic surveillance, turns the target, like myself, into a walking, talking piece of surveillance equipment. They have the ability to see through my eyes in real time, hear through my ears, everything that's said. It's interesting because it would be almost a perfect way to implement something known as man-machine interface. If you can stimulate the brain, you can stimulate vision, you can stimulate auditory cortex, you can stimulate movement, uh, you can stimulate um, uh, passions, you can stimulate um, desires, you can um, basically address your brain directly. Many observers would say that normal humans have invented creativity, they have art, they have a whole pile of new things in their minds. It would infer that by some other group of people demanding a hive mind or a board mind or a cyborg mind or something that is totally controlled, that they are maybe different to other people here. You know, everybody has the same potential. And uh, as far as a hive mind is concerned, uh, yes, that is exactly what they would like. A ruler, the queen bee or the, wh whoever it happens to be, sends out or transmits a signal to the worker bees, the slaves, who carry out that signal or order. And uh, that is what the Illuminati wish. Remember, we're on a planet of over seven and a half billion people. The Illuminati, Committee of 300, all the control systems, if you add them up, it's only a few hundred thousand people. And that might sound like a lot, but in comparison to billions, it's minute. And so, armies and weapons are not enough. The population could overwhelm that small minority. And so the most logical thing that they can do is mind control the population. Are we gonna roll this back? Or are we gonna wait until it's got really, really extreme? By which time there'll be so much infrastructure in place that drawing a line in the sand will be a serious challenge. You know, if you read um, Orwell's book, 1984, you know, Big Brother was not um, focusing uh, attention on controlling the whole of the population or monitoring the whole of the population primarily because most of the population would just sit there and, and, and stew anyway. Um, and we're no problem to this control. But what this surveillance was targeting, and what surveillance is targeting now, are people who are challenging the system, people who are becoming aware of what's going on and are having the guts to try to do something about it. New World Order. Billions of people on planet Earth are living in ignorance. Before your very eyes, politicians are advancing a global plan. Since the time of Napoleon, secret societies have been influencing politicians to take over and conquer Europe. Now, in the 21st century, their work of ages is coming to fruition. The New World Order is about the centralization of power. It's about silencing any public criticism of the system. 
It's about commercializing and selling everything as a product. What we're witnessing is the construction of a worldwide dictatorship. But to get it done, they have to be able to manipulate us into going along with it. They're confident that you won't wake up till it's too late. The good news is people are waking up in record numbers. The question is, now that you know the secret, now that you understand the inner workings of the New World Order, will you take action to wake others up and stand up against this Fourth Reich of the elite? The globalists have America and Europe in their grasp today, but tomorrow they want the world. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. What HARP is doing is creating a shield in the ionosphere over the Earth and trying to create weather manipulation so that we think there are such things as global warming when in fact it's just a manipulation of our weather and uh, geological events as well. Let me... Uh... Let me ask you about the success of Montauk. Do you know if they accomplished anything that was just truly extraordinary? Well, I think that they did accomplish their goal. And, I, and right now, 100% of the Earth is uh, affected by mind control or scalar waves that are transmitted now from satellites in space that completely ring the Earth and are enhanced by ground antenna that we see as cell tower microwave transmissions so that at any moment they can transmit a mind control wave to specific areas of the earth uh, to specific people and a lot of what's happening now with the chemtrails is also creating a web or a network around the earth like a shield or radio wiring so that it's like a grid that covers the earth and they can pinpoint very specific locations now and transmit whatever they wish to, to create. Brain node fringes are the basis of thought and mind processes of individuals. Certain embodiments of this invention enable such brain fringes and behavior to be captured by an external device. So something can read your brain and keep that information. It is an object of this invention to utilize a normalization of normalizing curve or waveform or pattern based upon monitored brain activity to detect or determine thought process by the monitored individual. In such a manner, individuals can transmit by satellite what they are thinking or intending to think via their monitored brain activity without the need to talk or write down the information telepathic kind of stuff, if you will. Okay, then it goes on. Each individual has a distinct pattern of brain known fridges or brain activity. Each person is believed to be different in this regard, and this is creepy. Thus, a separate brain activity file may be stored in a memory for each individual. So they can store information on every one of us on our brain activity. If the NSA spying on Facebook, your, you know, through your cars, through your, uh, you know, through your electric electronic devices, through your washing machine, if it isn't enough that NASA's already spy or the NSA, sorry, not NASA, leap there, but if the NSA is already spying on everything you do, why do they need to go as far as to know what we're thinking? If you think it's bad now, it's about to get a heck of a lot worse. I've heard from victims from Norway, from Sweden, from China, from Italy, from Germany, from India, um, from Yemen, just about everywhere. This is a global thing. The eventual intent will be to control the world population with. Bond says he's found more than 300 victims locally and is tracking others across the state through billboards. 
In Johnson Valley, a Freedom House just opened to help people who believe they are being targeted. To many of you who find yourselves uh, the, the object of covert harassment, that there is hope and that you are not alone and that we are striving uh, to, uh, to find legislation uh, for, and we're working towards freedom for all. Derek Robinson leads a national group called Freedom from Covert Harassment and Surveillance. He says he knows who's playing mind games. Rogue government officials that are uh, sponsoring this, um, also corrupt business officials, and um, private citizens. And he also told us how. Most of it is delivered by microwave, and I believe it's satellite delivered, uh, whether someone is uh, on a remote location using a, a laptop, my, my hope is that people will wake up and realize that things are not the way they should be, that they need to take control of their own mind. I don't believe in physical revolution or physical violence. The war has to be in here. You have to take control of your, your brain, of your mind pattern, of your emotions, and do release work that will undermine the mind patterns of the programming and then release what's hooked on to those mind patterns and access your core personality, reintegrate who and what you are, sew those compartmentalized pieces of the mind back together so that uh, we can uh, have the society we're supposed to have. Why does this happen? Because, as I said before, we project out what's in our mind patterns and the world reflects it back. So humanity as a species has a victimization mind pattern. When you have a victimization mind pattern, you attract tyrants and oppressors. And so, what we see, it's really, we must take responsibility. You can't blame the Illuminati or the aliens. Or they are here because we're allowing them to be here. If we change the way we think, change the film, project out something else, then they will have no power over us. It could happen tomorrow if everybody would wake up and do it. Is that likely? No. Will it eventually happen? I believe so. I think that humanity uh, will be backed against the corner to the point where they'll say, hey, we've had enough and we're going to do something about this. The Illuminati, the mind control, the program, all of this, they want you to think that you're disconnected from the source, from the God mind. But that can never be. They can only make you have an illusion that that is so. But in actuality, you can never be disconnected from Creator. And so it's my hope to teach people how to take that part of them the creative part and extrapolate that into their lives and project that out so all of this will go away. Okay, how, does, how do people wake up? This is what I teach in my work. I teach people how to balance the left and right hemisphere of the brain, how to work with their energy systems, how to deprogram, how to connect to their higher intelligence that's within them. I teach them color therapy, alternative healing, how to eat, how to exercise, basically how, how to be a, a human being. And so that's what I teach, and again, it's up to each individual to do this or not do this, their choice. You know, the, the bad thing about someone being able to hear your thoughts in real time, which is the way, the way this technology works, is the, the social ramifications it's going to have uh, will be far greater than probably the good that it can do. Once people realize that the government not only can watch you inside your house, can attack you for behavior they don't agree with, and hear your thoughts, well, there, there's a lot of, you know, psychosocial implications of that, especially, you know, among the religious, you know, I mean, when you pray or, you know, it's not God hearing your prayers, it's the government, and that's going to be disconcerting to a lot of people. The, the first thing is that, uh, and I tell this in all my classes, that there's nothing to fear. You are always loved. You can do nothing wrong, and when I say that, it's not that you should murder people, it's that whatever does happen, there's a reason for it and a lesson to learn from it. And that you must take control of your own mind so no one else takes control of your mind. And research who and what you are, 
What are your origins? Where did your family come from? And I encourage you to go to the sources, not to read in books or on the internet, but go to where you originated and go from that source back because that's where the information is. And uh, to uh, be kind to each other. You must be kind to each other. Get rid of the anger. Get rid of the hostility. Uh, there's no reason to fight. Now is the time to unify, but for the right reasons. I don't know how much you believe about global warming. My personal belief is that it's been fairly well debunked uh, when they caught the scientists trying to lie about their results on yeah. temperature changes. That mm -hmm. was probably going to be the initial global boogeyman. You know, the general public always needs a boogeyman to be scared of to yeah. wrap them into control. You know, we had 9-11, therefore we had the Patriot Act. We needed to yep. surrender our civil liberties for our safety. Yeah. Um, well, for the UN to have a global government, they'll need a global boogeyman. And the, um, the global warming thing kind of got debunked. If you've noticed, there's mm -hmm. more and more coming out in the news now about aliens, uh, yeah. alien contact. The, the UN has appointed a delegate for when there's alien contact. Even Fox News, one of the most conservative news um, you know, channels, is doing stories about alien contact on occasion now that, that you know, five, ten years ago you've never seen on Fox News. Um, yeah. That's all part of conditioning to uh, eventually that the Project Blue Beam uh, alien contact will be what what gives us the the feeling that we need a global government to come to combat the alien invasion. And I can foresee that that happening here relatively quickly in the future. Good morning. My name is Carol Rosen. In 1974. After being a sixth grade school teacher, I was introduced to the late Dr. Werner von Braun in the U.S., the father of rocketry. In my first meeting with him during that first three and a half hours, he said to me, Carol, you will stop the weaponization of space. And I said, uh, you know, teachers don't stop until June. He said, no, you have to understand, this is February, and we have to prevent the weaponization of space because there is a lie being told to everyone that the weaponization of space is now first being based upon the evil empire, the Russians. There are many enemies, he said, against whom we're going to build this space-based weapon system, the first of whom was the Russians, which was existing at that time. Then there would be terrorists. Then there would be third world countries. Now we call them rogue nations or nations of concern. Then there would be asteroids. And then he would repeat to me over and over, and the last card, the last card, the last card would be the extraterrestrial threat. Well, at the time, I kind of laughed when he said asteroids, and when he said extraterrestrials, I knew I wasn't going to deal with that subject. And now we hear on the news just today, this week, that they've slid in another enemy. Only this time we're going to protect our satellites. In other words, we have to have some reason to spend these trillions to waste these dollars on a space-based weapon system, and they're all lies. This is a system, he told me, that would never protect anyone. Even back then, he talked about suitcase bombs. He talked about chemical, viral, bacterial, bat biological warfare that these space-based weapons would never protect us against. And then he told me that, in fact, if you travel around the world, which I did after he died in 1977, I met with people in over 100 countries who were friends. They didn't want to build space-based weapons. I became a space and missile defense consultant. And I worked with people around the world. I became a, an advisor to the People's Republic of China. They don't want to build a space-based weapon system. And he told me back then that they didn't. He said, go to Russia. They're considered to be the enemy. I got on a plane by myself. When I got to Russia, I had a list of people that I had read out of the newspaper. Chernenko was in office then. He was the only one I didn't get a chance to meet. They introduced me to everyone when I got there. And when I got back, I said, oh, my Lord, this man is telling the truth. There are, is no threat. And I've been waiting until this day for 27 years. And I'm expecting the spin to happen because he also explained to me that in the, as a military strategist, as a person who worked on the MX missile, which I did later, he said, you will find that there is going to be a spin to find some enemy against whom we have to build space-based weapons. And now 
we should expect the spin because he said part of the formula for the intelligence community is if they might have a weapon then we have to consider that they do have these weapons so now they do have these weapons so now we have to build these weapons systems and that's the formula except that it's all based on a lie and we have witnesses here today that have shown you that these extraterrestrial beings that these craft that have come here are now not UFOs they're identified flying objects and we know that they have beings in them and we have witnesses here who have told you that they can shut down our missile silos they can stop a rocket going into space that's a test we have witnesses here who have worked in the classified departments who have the courage to come forward here to support what Werner von Braun told me back in 1974-77. And I will testify before the Congress that when I founded the Institute for Security and Cooperation in Outer Space, which I shut down a few years ago because I didn't believe we had a chance with this huge integrated around the world complex weapon system that we had any chance at all of transforming that war industry into a space industry that could provide benefits like Dr. Greer has said of global warming we can end that situation of that problem we can end the energy crisis we can put, build now non-polluting technologies Werner von Braun used to tell me that we could have cars back then that w drove around off the ground he described this to me on beams so that we have no pollution on this planet and we can solve the problems of the people that are urgent and potential and the other animals and the other cultures on earth and in space and we can end the arms race without dislocating the industry jobs, without disrupting the economy, by transforming, Werner von Braun told me, the war industry into a global cooperative space industry that will provide, he said, finally, more jobs and profits on this planet than during any hot or cold war time, more products and services that can be applied directly to solving the problems of this planet, and we can have a whole planet now that lives on in peace on Earth with all the cultures on Earth and with all the extraterrestrial cultures in space. And these are words that Werner von Braun told me in 1974. And I will testify before the Congress under oath about everything I have said and more. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just as music from the radio is a physical manifestation of an intangible signal, our experience of emotion is the physical manifestation of an intangible signal as well. It has been shown that our emotions have a vibratory frequency to them. Furthermore, there are only two emotions that humankind experiences, fear and love. All other emotions branch either directly or indirectly from these two emotions. Fear has a long and slow frequency vibration to it, while love has a very rapid and high frequency. To show that vibration is the very foundation of existence, Hans Jene developed what is known as cymatics in the 1940s to show that when vibrations of sound are passed through a form of media, there is a set pattern that will follow. When the frequency increases, the media develops into a more complex pattern. This is precisely what is happening to our Earth and to humanity. There are 64 possible codes of amino acids in our DNA structure made from four elements, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen. By any means of logic, we should have all 64 codes activated within our DNA structure. Yet we presently only have 20 active codes. And of these 64 possibilities, it appears that only 20 of these codes are turned on right now for us, the 20 amino acids. There is a switch that turns off and turns on where those coding sites lie, and that the switch uh, for that turning off and turning on is what we call emotion. And this is the first time that we've ever seen the patterns of emotion directly physically linked to human genetic material. Well, fear is a long, slow wave of emotion. So this wave of fear is a long, slow wave and touches relatively few sites on this DNA. So an individual living in fear is limited to the number of antenna that they have available to them 
We're as an individual uh, living in the pattern of love. This is love in DNA. You can see it's, it's a higher frequency, shorter uh, wavelength. We have many more potential sites for coding uh, along that genetic pattern. This information, this is amazing. This is the first time we've ever had a hard digital link between emotion and genetics. This is important to understand because another researcher named Vladimir Popinov measured tiny particles of light called photons inside a vacuum tube. The photons were scattered as expected. A sample of DNA was then entered into the vacuum tube and they measured the photons again. They found that the particles of light aligned themselves along the axis of the DNA. Then, as they removed the DNA sample, the photons remained aligned to the same form of the DNA even though no DNA was present. This is what is known as the phantom DNA experiment. Science has now bridged a very important gap between physical and ethereal, or spiritual. Our emotions directly affect the structure of our DNA, which directly shapes the physical world we experience every day. Yeah. You know, we, we've just got to not let fear get to us, because that's the control system's most potent weapon. Hmm. Well, I think that, um, you know, the spraying from the air, uh, I mean, I've been to 50 countries over the last 20 years, and um, even when I visit my, my friend, uh, Credo Mutwa, the Zulu shaman in South Africa near the Kalahari Desert, he look up in the sky, and the bloody chemtrails are there. They're everybody where. And there's, a, there's um, obviously a reason for that. And one of the things I've learned over this 20 years of research is that there's never one reason for anything. Mm -hmm. um, there are multiple reasons. Part of it is uh, destabilizing the human immune system part of it is creating a sub reality around uh, the planet in to manipulate the energetic field that we're living in every day and um, I, I'm absolutely convinced that um, the chemtrails and the manipulation of the lower levels of uh, the uh, energetic field, Earth's energetic field, which we live in and experience all the time, um, is connected in, in, in part to, to the harp transmissions, um, which, uh, of course, harp has many, many multiple um, levels of uh, technology and applications, and one of them is literally uh, creating mass uh, fields of thought, which we decode as our own. Um, I had a, a friend in America who um, told me... Um, a few weeks ago, that she, her husband, um, her uh, son, and her son's uh, partner uh, had exactly the same dream about uh, uh, Barack Obama in the same night, um, uh, which was a dream saying that he was a good guy and a wonderful guy and all the rest of it, which, uh, you know, a day's research will show you was a nonsense. But, um, and, and, and she said immediately that she felt that some kind of technology had been broadcast and people had picked it up. What they're um, seeking to access is, is the pineal gland um, to, mm. to literally transmit um, thought, perceptions, dreams um, um, into, your, into your reality. We need to be aware of this because um, not every dream is a, is a premonition of, 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 oh, you know, all the rest of it. They can, they can be... Uh, uh, broadcast out and we can we can uh, decode them and th and thinking it's a dream we're having when it's actually something we're picking up and that's what's what what part of the the heart system is
The love that you withhold is the pain that you carry. That's been the most memorable one, only because of, of what that particular statement entails. Um, when we leave our physical form and, you know, what many of the uh, Catholicisms teach, you know, you're judged by God. It just simply isn't true. We judge ourselves. And, I, and what I read in that statement is that when we cross over, we look at the places in our life where we withheld love, that we maybe didn't give enough. And um, we judge ourselves on that. The love that you withhold is the pain that you carry. This is the difference between the power of the, our Creator and anything else, particularly evil. That you can go into a pitch black room full of evil, full of darkness, and light a little candle, and instantly that darkness flees. But you can't do the opposite. You can't go into a well-lit room full of truth and wisdom and righteousness and joy and health and harmony with the universal power. And you can't take a, any amount of darkness and go into that well-lit room and have any effect whatsoever. That is the metaphor which I frequently think of when I think that I'm not empowered. It is the greatest lesson for me and I think for everybody else to know that we're on the winning side and that we win in the end. What it is, what we need to do is, is to make people aware, 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 aware that they are eternal light, they are eternal energy, they cannot die and the whole world's and our individual's development to higher realms is the goal. And that's it. And the extreme final goal is the universal love where we are all one like a droplet in the ocean. And the droplet in the ocean today doesn't necessarily know that it is part of the ocean. Like we don't know as human beings in a vehicle of, of the body that we are all one in the energy. And that's it. We are all one.